My name is Christelle Sabatier. I'm director of the neuroscience program at Santa Clara University. And I'm very excited that you're interested in learning more about our program and I hope I can tell you more about it. Let me share my screen so I can share um, a few slides with you um, and hopefully answer some of your questions. Um, this is something we're getting to do a lot of these days. So here we go. Um, our, as you probably know, our neuroscience program is, is fairly new. We launched in fall 2018. Uh, since the beginning, it's been a joint venture between the departments of biology and psychology at um, Santa Clara University. Um, all of our faculty, including my partner in crime, um, Dr. Simone, uh, are, are uh, affiliated either with the psychology department or uh, with the biology department. In addition, we have a number of faculty that constitute our program council, which informs and, and, and helps guide our decisions, um, especially as we consider the, 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 the interdisciplinary aspect of our major. And it includes faculty from physics and philosophy. We actually have a new faculty member um, who's in engineering. Um, and, and, and they really allow us to, to see beyond uh, these two disciplines of biology and psychology and, and provide opportunities for our students um, that we might not uh, ourselves have thought of otherwise. Our first class in graduating in 2018 was very small and mighty, um, five students who switched over from um, majors such as biology or biochem, um, I think psychology as well. Uh, but since then, we've been growing steadily and, and seem to have settled at about 30 students per year. So our graduating class this year uh, is 29 students. That's, uh, that works out beautifully with the, with the resources that we have for research and, 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 and for our curriculum. It means that we really can pay attention to these students, but also there, there are enough of them that they can form a, a, a community uh, and they can support each other through their four years at Santa Clara. Um, the work that we do both in the classroom and in our research labs encompasses many different uh, subdisciplines of neuroscience. Um, we, we don't assume that our students uh, uh, know yet where they want to wind up. Uh, and so we want to give them opportunities to explore many different aspects of the field, while at the same time allowing them to go deep um, into the questions that they ultimately settle on. Um, here, represented in this image, you can see some of the cutting edge uh, tools that we use uh, at Santa Clara. Um, we have a couple of faculty members who use a technique um, that allows uh, engineered rodents, um, in this case a rat, but in their labs um, usually mice, who, who respond to uh, light or chemicals by that change um, the, the activity of their neurons. And by observing how that might impact um, either the behavior of an animal or the development of a circuit, uh, we can learn a lot about um, about this complex organ that is our brain. Um, this is my favorite organism here, much larger than it truly is in real life. It's a one millimeter long worm, C. elegans, that has exactly 302 neurons and in, in which every single synapse has been mapped. It's the only animal for which we have the entire connectome. And so because of the ease with which we can work with this animal, um, students in my neurobiology lab are able to design their own experiments and ask questions uh, that probe uh, the, the underlying uh, molecular biology and genetics um, of the behavior of these animals. And they can do all of that in a 10-week quarter. Finally, and not pictured here, we have uh, faculty members who, who focus on humans, human neuroscience. Um, and particularly use computational tools, for example, to model um, aspects of cognition. And students get to get involved um, in that as well. 
We have a, a wonderful team of young and talented faculty. We're very fortunate to have been able to recruit them um, to Santa Clara. Um, they work in many different aspects of neuroscience, which allows us, again, to have that breadth that we can offer the stu students in our courses, but also they have been incredibly generous with taking on students into their research labs and providing them with amazing opportunities to start contributing um, to the field. Our courses um, include four, uh, four courses that are specific to neuroscience, and then we pull from either biology or um, psychology. Um, we're very proud of this neuroethics course as well, um, in that uh, that's offered through the philosophy department. Finally, um, or well, let me and let me talk about these neuroscience courses specifically. So our intro to neuroscience course really asks the students to think about the impact of society on neuroscience as well as the impact of neuroscience on society. Um, and this is a, a core course and that uh, really helps the students uh, connect between this discipline that they uh, might be interested in majoring in and, and, and really the mission uh, of, a, of a Santa Clara Jesuit education. Um, and it's a great way to sort of start to engage students um, in the field. Then they move on to uh, a methods course. This is a lab course in which they start to actually work with um, animals and gather data and use computational uh, tools to, uh, to analyze that data um, and ask questions. Um, in their third year, they typically take their neuroscience seminar course. In this course, we invite faculty uh, from academic labs or scientists from industry labs to present um, their work as well as to talk about their journey through neuroscience. This is also a time in which uh, we ask our students to engage in some career development um, and, and, and think about um, sort of what do they need uh, both from our program or from internships or research opportunities that will help position them for the jobs that they're looking to, to obtain in their future. Um, and then we cap it all off with a, a capstone course in their fourth year. In this um, course, the students uh, are, are less sort of acquiring new information and, and, and integrating it, but are now starting to produce uh, new knowledge and we ask them to work in teams to to propose new experiments um, that, that address a particular problem of interest to them in neuroscience. Um, this is a sample four year curriculum to convince you that it is possible to do all of this in, in four years. Um, what I like about the way this is uh, set up is that you can see both of our both our major classes as well as our university core requirement classes all mapped out and that still leaves a number of slots for free electives. Why is that important? Um, in undergraduate ex education, it's really an important time for a student to explore. And the major might allow them to do that a little bit, but they may have other ideas. Uh, we, we have a number of students who take on minors or double majors, and so they really need these, these free slots to be able to do that. Um, others of our students are, are, are interested in, in going on to very specific graduate programs that have very particular requirements that we may not uh, or may not be part of our major and so they need those free electives to be able to slot those extra classes in as well. Not shown here but I think important to note um, typically our students do go abroad um, in their usually the fall of their third year. It's very easy to move some of these courses around um, and, and replace them with these free electives or take a, one course abroad that would satisfy the major, um, but really engage in that uh, deep um, global and experiential experience. Our students uh, are not just busy in the classroom, they're incredibly busy 
um, outside of the classroom. This is just a few examples of, of research students who have gone on to present their work uh, at, at conferences. Um, this is a group of students that we, we got to take to Chicago in November of last year uh, for a um, Society for Neuroscience annual meeting. So this is an international meeting drawing um, neuroscientists from around the world in which a number of our students got to present posters uh, to these, uh, these top neuroscientists. Um, this uh, is a presentation here uh, to, for our college showcase. So this is a local conference. But Kimberly is tuning up her, her, her presentation and, and is getting it ready to go on the road uh, to a national conference herself um, once things get back to normal. Um, one of the key aspects to this program that I, I particularly love is how engaged our students are with the program. They're constantly giving us feedback, letting us know what has worked for them, uh, or, or what their needs are. Um, I was privileged to host back a number of our alumni uh, for a career panel in which they talked to our current students about the process by which they found the jobs um, where they were working um, and, 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 and their plans for the future. Many of these students intend to go on to other graduate programs, medical school, uh, PhD programs, uh, I think we have a physician assistant program and law school here. Um, and yet, yet they were all working um, uh, for a couple of years to sort of get ready for that next step. And in listening to them, I really got to hear that we, we had achieved what we sought to do with this program. We created problem solvers um, who could take on new problems um, and, 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 and start working with other people and teams uh, uh, to find solutions. Um, they're lifelong learners. They're not afraid of saying, I don't know, but they have strategies for how to figure it out. Um, and they're incredibly uh, thoughtful in their communication. Um, and they work well um, in, in a diverse environment where multiple perspectives are needed um, to solve problems. So we're very proud of them. Um, even though we've only had a few uh, graduates so far, we're excited to see what the future brings. Um, you may be wondering what jobs they are taking, they're getting right after they graduate. Um, and, and, and we have been tracking that. So the vast majority, this is uh, many of the students who are interested in going on to healthcare, uh, either for to go to medical school or, or other graduate programs, um, they take on these clinical research assistant positions. So these are, um, these are jobs in which our students work with clinical uh, scientists or doctors who are leading um, clinical trials. Um, they'll, they have the opportunity to work with patients, they collect data and analyze data. So they're really using many of the skills um, that they have uh, acquired through the major, but also are, are, are gaining new skills that will set them up for their future. Uh, we have a number of students who are working in uh, research labs. So this is doing bench work science, molecular biology, um, uh, some physiology, um, cell biology, uh, either in an academic lab or uh, in industry labs. Um, we have a, a student who's working in the healthcare consulting um, field. Um, and then uh, this is a student who wants to go to law school. She's applying to law school this year. Uh, she's working as a, as a legal assistant. Um, not all of our students follow paths that we would predict. Uh, one of our graduating seniors plans on going into late night comedy. Uh, and he is incredibly thoughtful and articulate about how um, his understanding of neuroscience um, and the skills that he's developed in the major has set him up for that. He, he went and took an internship in LA and has been networking in the field um, and, and started to, to, to do stand-up comedy um, in, in, in different places. Um, and, and so yeah, maybe we'll see him in late night TV in the future. 
Um, and so with that, uh, I, I'd love to hear from you with questions. You can always check out our website um, uh, here for, for much more information, but you can also send me an email at neuroscience at seu.edu. Thank you so much for your time.